First, gently pipette mix your cell or nuclei suspension 10 times with a wide bore P200 pipette tip. The cell or nuclei suspension should be freshly mixed before transferring into the pips to prevent settling from impacting your sample loading. Next, add 5 microliters of your freshly mixed sample directly into the pips, plus 40 units of RNase inhibitor. Ensure cells or nuclei are dispensed into the pips layer and not just on the surface of the pips. If performing multiple reactions, add cells and RNase inhibitor to all pip tubes before proceeding to the next step. Then pipette mix each sample 10 times using a standard bore low retention P200 tip to ensure even dispersal of the sample. It is important to pipette slowly to the first stop only to avoid creating foam or excessive bubbles. This step should be completed with the pip tubes in the four tube stand. We are not showing that here, so proper mixing can be observed. Next, add 320 microliters of partitioning reagent down the side wall of the pip tube. Tightly cap tubes and place in the rotating vortex adapter in the horizontal configuration. Ensure the tubes are fully inserted into the adapter. Samples will be vortexed for 15 seconds in the horizontal configuration, followed by 2 minutes in the vertical configuration at 3000 RPM. For better vortexing efficiency, we recommend starting the timer at 2 minutes and stopping the vortex with 1 minute and 45 seconds remaining, or after 15 seconds of vortexing horizontally. Rotate the vortex head into the vertical configuration and hit the start button to vortex vertically for 2 minutes. At the end of this step, we have generated our emulsion and captured our cells or nuclei inside our single cell droplets. Now we need to remove the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom of the tube so there is room to add the chemical lysis emulsion. After the emulsion has stabilized post vortexing, use a G22 blunt tip needle on a 1 mil syringe to aspirate out partitioning reagent from the bottom phase until the bottom of the pips and cells emulsion phase reaches the lowest stand mark B. Place the needle tip at the bottom of the tube and wait 5 seconds before aspirating. Wipe the tip on the side of the tube on the way out to avoid any sample loss due to pips retention to the syringe tip. Be careful not to aspirate any emulsion. Aliquot 90 microliters of CLB3 into a 0.5 ml Eppendorf safe lock tube for each sample being processed. For the remaining chemical lysis steps, we recommend processing one sample at a time. Add 270 microliters of partitioning reagent down the side wall of one 0.5 ml tube containing CLB3. Next, vortex the tube for 10 seconds at max speed on a standard benchtop vortexer to generate the chemical lysis emulsion. Immediately transfer the entire chemical lysis emulsion into the PIP tube before closing the tube. And inverting 10 times. Then proceed with the next sample by adding partitioning reagent and repeating these same steps. Verify that the PIP-seq dry bath is preheated to the appropriate temperature for your sample type. Then insert the samples into the dry bath and select Skip and Yes to begin the lysis incubation. Please refer to the user guide for the cell and nuclei lysis temperature profiles for this step. After incubation is complete, this is the first stopping step of the workflow. Samples are stable at 20 degrees Celsius for up to 96 hours. After preparing all of your mRNA isolation regions, as detailed in the user guide, place PIP tubes in the 4-tube stand 
and aspirate excess partitioning reagent out of the bottom phase until the top of the sample emulsion sits below the upper marker A. No more than a few microliters of the bottom phase should remain. Be careful not to aspirate out any of the upper emulsion phase. Remember to wait 5 seconds prior to aspirating and wipe your syringe tip on the way out of the tube to prevent sample loss. Label and save this syringe for use in the pink waste removal step. Next, add 300 microliters of breaking buffer down the PIP tube sidewall, followed by an addition of 100 microliters of pink departitioning reagent added in the same fashion. We will then invert the sample 10 to 20 times to break our emulsions. After spinning down your samples in a benchtop munifuge for 10 seconds, Aspirate all of the bottom pink waste phase using a G22 blunt bottom syringe needle on a 1 mil syringe. Ensure to aspirate all pink waste including the bright red dot at the interface before continuing with a secondary spin down and waste removal. Spin the samples down for another 10 seconds, then use good lighting to double check for any remaining pink waste at the bottom of the tube. Be sure to carefully aspirate out any remaining pink waste with the saved 1 mil syringe using small circular motions. It is critical to remove all of the pink waste, as it is inhibitory to reverse transcription if not fully removed. Once you've removed all of the pink waste, your samples can be placed on ice and you should move directly to the washing section of the user guide. With a P200 low retention pipette, slowly aspirate the pips from the 0.5 mL sample tube and transfer that volume into one of the 1x washing buffer aliquots in the 1.5 mL tubes. Briefly centrifuge the remaining volume in the 0.5 mL pips sample tube on a benchtop minifuge to bring the liquid to the bottom of the tube. Then transfer any remaining pips into the same wash buffer aliquot. Be sure that no pips remain in the sample tube or the pipette tip. If droplets remain in the pipette tip, flush them out by aspirating up and down in the wash buffer aliquot at least three times. Vortex mix pips using the blue 1.5 mil tube stand by holding the stand horizontally on a flathead vortex mixer for approximately three seconds. Centrifuge the 1.5 mL tubes of wash pips for one minute on a benchtop minifuge. Always use the power button to turn the benchtop minifuge off for a gradual stop to ensure well-packed pips. Gently place the wash one aliquots into the 1.5 mL stand to aid in supernatant removal. Aspirate and discard the aqueous supernatant to the three marker on the tube stand without disturbing the pips pellet. For wash 2, add 1200 microliters of 1x washing buffer and repeat vortexing and supernatant removal steps. Repeat these steps two more times using 1 mil washes before moving on to volume regulation. After preparing a clean 0.5 mil safe lock Eppendorf tube, aspirate the entire pit mixture of approximately 200 microliters and dispense into the 0.5 mL tube before spinning down in a benchtop minifuge for one minute using gradual breaking. While the pit pellet is still at an angle, quickly use a P200 pipette to remove the clear supernatant down to the 0.1 mL mark on the tube. This is critical to ensure proper volume regulation of the sample for mixing with our RT Master Mix. Users can then place samples on ice and proceed to reverse transcription.